Hello everyone, welcome back. Paul Trani here with the one and only Alexandria from hey. Alexandria's Lens. Last day. Last day. We need a little joked up right there, <laughs> just little. Do you, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we have you for day three. Just so you know, replays of course are in the replays tab. Uh, this is also being broadcast on YouTube. So if you see if it's on YouTube, jump over to behance.net forward slash live and give Alexandria a warm welcome. Hey. Day three, the last day, the <laughs> saddest day. The We're gonna get a day. little This is choked. a great start. Yeah, way to, way to, <laughs> way to, this, way this to bring so the positivity. Like, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you do amazing work and we're totally into it. Also love to hear where you're from. Uh, usually this time of day we will hit more of like, sort of like Latin America and everything, so. Col um, me? Oh yeah. Colorado. Well, yeah, you are from Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, so from Colorado and then everybody else, cause it looks like uh, Valder's from Brazil. Brazil. Afroja, you're from, aren't you? Don't you live in India or somewhere? Afroja does, but let us know where you're from. And uh, yeah, we just want to welcome you. Musa as well. Welcome let us all. Know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Love seeing you. Denmark's in the house, so it's later in Denmark. Yeah. So. Thanks for sticking around. Italy, Morocco. Morocco, very cool. I love Morocco. Pakistan, Germany, nice. This is really cool. It's fun, and again, we're kind of in the holiday season. If you were broadcasting from San Francisco, the Adobe office is here. In the lobby, I don't know if you noticed, uh, there's like, we have a bunch of like Christmas trees, but it's like Christmas is around the world. So there's like a Middle East one, there's uh, like one from Europe, and it's really just kind of fun to see all these different cultures in the oh, lobby. Oh, I forgot my uh, antlers. Oh, I was gonna wear yeah. antlers today. Oh, that would have been cool. We could probably get you some. I think I saw some around here. <laughs> San Francisco's with us. New Zealand, again, super late, back or early in the morning. I'm not sure what time it is there. But either way, we're happy to have you Yes. Uh, as well. Phil from the UK. All right, so let's dive in. Like, uh, what's the plan today? What do you think? Kind of uh, winging it a little bit. I flew through my edits quicker than I imagined. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, I have this one that I did. And so again, I was just kind of kind of show a few steps of things, um, kind of like what I did with um, the Patronus yesterday. Okay. So, um, if I unsee everything here. That's Ooh, and that's a good little tip what you just did there because you turned off all the other layers except for that one. So you can see the original. Did you do a right click on the eyeball? Is that what you did? Yes, right click and show hide all layer layers. Yeah. Layers, layers. Nice. <laughs> and then uh, what, uh, just so you know, we had uh, Aaron Nace from Fleur on this morning, Ted Chin as well. Aaron built in a shortcut for that for toggling on and off layers, and I think that was kind of cool. But I love this one because it shuts off everything else, reveals the original. Right. Oh, wow. So that was adding in just a little bit of a mood. Oh, I'm into it. Another one of my random skies, you know? Yeah, I um, like it. And then... Is that your son again? Yes. <laughs> nice. I found this tree when we were at the park, and I thought, I need to go back and shoot this because it was so cool. Um, just sitting there in huge tree. So I did that in a lantern. I use lanterns a lot. Yeah. It's... So here I brought up the color on the grass just because okay. it was a little too dark. Yeah. And how are, how are you making those? Like you're turning on and off layers. I'm curious as to what some of those layers are. Like you have the moody layer. That yeah. Is... So that's a, that's a sky, right? Okay. That's the sky. So, um, and you, you looks then like I you went have a through layer and I mask added a layer with... mask and went ahead and took some of it off the tree. Okay, cool. And does it have the opacity taken down too? There, there we go, yeah. Let's see, the opacity's down and the layer mask is there. Cool. So, let's see. Added some birds, why not? Oh, and the birds. Because it was in October, right there. so and yeah. Then one there, okay. And um, I found a stock image of a, a door, kind of like a hobbit door. Oh, okay. And I went through and 
um, cut him out so he could be in front of the door. And just kind of played around with some different, um, I think I used a branch brush, or a bark brush, actually. What's and kind of added some more edging back in here and things like that. You have a bark brush? No, the, the internet does. Oh, the internet does. <laughs> I'm into it. And then, you were just um, on the prowl for brushes. And... I am. There's some uh, fog. Again, you can get fog brushes and add some of that in there, warping them and things like that to kind of. How do you how do you know when to use, like sometimes you use brushes and sometimes you use photos and, and mask them. Okay. I guess for like fog, it doesn't just make more sense to use like a brush because you're just kind of, it's varying levels of white. Yeah, exactly. The colors um, yeah. make a big difference. That looks really good. And Thank then you. put another layer of bark here. Let me see. And then I added a window too. <laughs> Why not? Oh yeah. <laughs> Found a window on another door can on a stock image and put it there. Can you zoom in on that a little bit so we can see it in all of its glory? Just added that cool. little guy in there. And you can take it a step further and add some light in the black. You'd have to take out all the black and then put the light in behind it. Yeah, and then you'd have to see yeah, exactly. Right. And then what if if it if that light gets reflected anywhere? And the final stuff, exactly. <laughs> Just adding that. So that's where your son lives. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. Is it looks like Winnie the Pooh to me. Yeah. You know, when he take he lives in the yeah. tree. And then just to even take a second look at that, what, was your son carrying a lantern, like yes, for real? Yes, actually carrying the lantern. So oh, okay. Can, was, can we just like reveal that original? Okay, so it really was on and it was that color. Mm -hmm. Cool. And okay. I added an extra Got glow it. just to pump it up a little bit. <laughs> right. So yeah, that's it for this one. But um, again, you know, it wasn't a bad image to start with. Uh, so true. I mean, the original is actually. But you know, pretty, um, pretty striking. Oh yeah, make sure you're right clicking. <laughs> like on the, I have the problem of like just making sure what is selected because each, for each layer, there's going to be different menus for what you right click on. In oh yeah, the absolutely. Layers panel, and I always kind of miss that. Uh, and so I just didn't, you know, I just thought the white. It was okay, but it was just kind of added to the mood to give it a little bit of like some fogginess and blue mm -hmm. tones because I tend to edit in that way and just kind of bring it over. And if you are going to add the sky in like that, mm -hmm. if you see, I don't know if they can see it, but it's just kind of drawn over the branches, you know, um, okay. slightly with the low opacity brush, soft brush, and you can just kind of go over. Can I turn something on real fast? Because mm -hmm. yeah. people do ask about this, but this is only to have your system preferences. We'll make it so you can zoom in on your screen. So we'll go into accessibility, zoom, yes. and we'll turn this on. Why didn't you show me this day I one? I know, I should have. <laughs> uh, you could, some people use keyboard shortcuts. Okay. They'll hold down those and then like plus and minus. Oh, right, to zoom in on the picture or yeah. over here? On on your screen, wherever oh, your okay, mouse nice. is. So I use the, the scroll gesture. Well, that's what I usually use, <laughs> control. But I'll like go over here just so we can see what that looks like. Control and then two fingers. Oh, perfect. All right. So see, there we can it's see. a little bit like a tree, mm -hmm. but not all the way. And so I used a harder opacity down by the trunk and lighter as I got up the trunk. Mm -hmm. How do I zoom out? No. Again? Yeah, I know now you're stuck. Now you hate me. <laughs> Sorry, we're back. Uh, but no, that's great. Uh, yeah, so again, just very um, blended some leaves in and really just wanted to add a door to that tree as soon as I saw it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I thought right? it needed it. You're like, you door. know what? I bet you. I bet you somebody <laughs> could live in that tree. Yeah. That's your I thing. want to live in that tree. Uh, Simon, and it was also mentioned earlier, good tips, by the way, uh, in terms of if you wanted to turn off all the layers except for your current one, you can hold down the option key. Mm -hmm. Let's do and it. And then select the eyeball. And then click on the eyeball. Perfect. Hold on. Well, oh, yeah, you I, did. I, I okay, did good. Background. Perfect. Yeah. So good. Another handy tip. Good tips. <laughs> and I did put him off to the side when I was taking the shot. So if you're placing a stock image, it's just easier to, when you're going to put the door in, to mm -hmm. not have him covering the whole thing. Plus, 
then more of the focus can be on the door. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is where I wanted a lot of the focus to be, which is why I have them facing it and yeah. all of the direction is at the door. And I played around with different colors. I did a little red door and different things, but I ended up doing green. I just felt like it mm -hmm. really matched the scene well. Yeah. No, I'm into it. No, and that, that was really a stock good. image. So Could somebody we'll took it at the, I saw somebody say, come to um, New Zealand and see the real Hobbit doors. And that's where the stock image was taken. Oh, really? Yeah. From those real Hobbits. Mm -hmm. Is that like, a, that's a tourist destination yeah, now, huh? Yeah, I need to go. I'd be in I going. have to go. Life goals. Yes. Oh, there it is. And here it is on your Instagram, just to get mm -hmm. a quick shout out for you. Oh, well, thank you. Alexandra's lens. And this is, it's been fun to kind of scroll through your Instagram and then, you know, sort of pick apart or dissect how each one was made. So obviously here's the one that you have the PSD for. Right. This looks like, a, is this a Patronus too? That's a Patronus thing going on. A version on. of it. it. It was when I was kind of perfecting what I did later. So okay. that's another thing to show kind of how progression happened. So that was my first shot at a Patronus. Mm -hmm. I still love it because I tried my best, but then I went and did the next one a few weeks later. Mm -hmm. So I can show how you can progress to the next right there. Oh, okay. And just with a few more techniques, some more time, and just practicing through it. It's nice yeah. to see how it progresses over time. Can you at least show us the the brushes that you used for some of these like magical elements? Yeah, I can, except I don't have them on this computer. Oh. This isn't my oh, not home this computer. One. I don't use this one a lot. So I only load the you brushes. Have, don't you, do you have this one with you? Yes, that's a, I can show those. Yeah, just so just so everybody has an idea. You mean the, the online or? No, just like right here, just like on top, like just on a new layer. Um, as oh, okay. a resource for them. Okay, perfect. So just on some new layer. So, uh, Simon, she does take her own pictures, and that's one thing I've learned from you is how you will go out and you'll take, uh, like, you'll basically have an idea and take pictures for that. Yeah. And, it, it, but everything's done, like, like, in one evening, so you have the lighting and everything from that one night of shooting. Which is nice. It's true. Yeah, that does help. And photography was my first love. So that's okay. kind of where I started with it. Yeah. These, these are the smoke so brushes. That, yeah, that kind of gives you. I'm not sure. What, um, I'm loving this, though. Just to get, I just can easily see that, that type of shape. Aha! See what you yeah. get? Perfect. Like, that's the idea. Check that out. It's all like yeah. under all these layers. Hold on. There you go. That's you can cool. play with the color, right? Now it's matching the tree. Yeah, Smoking I love that. And what I've seen you do is use a brush, sort of you're almost using it kind of like a stamp. You know, you'll stamp it down and then you'll, act. how do you manipulate it? You're doing Oh, some let me show warping. that. Sorry, yeah, just remind me of things. <laughs> um, yeah, no, because um, it's never gonna be perfect out of the box. Oh, no way. And you know, just warping it like this. You can kind of change the direction of it. I'm going a little crazy, but you that know. looks like that could be like uh, like a Dementor, right? Is that what they're called? <laughs> yes. Look, hey, I know, I know have Harry you Potter been stuff. Up on it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I always ask my daughter too. Um, HP fact: Was it this or this? You know, Harry oh. Potter fact, and so we quiz each other. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So she'll come at me with some some random detail from the books. Just kind oh, of, really? Yeah. Have you seen the uh, fan, the latest? What's the latest Harry Potter? Oh, I'm uh, doing a lens blur, blur. Okay, lens blur here. Yeah. Okay, perfect. What did you ask me? The what's the latest Harry Potter movie called? Are you talking about Fantastic the, Beasts? The Fantastic Beasts one. Yeah, from this the series. So it's kind of like before Harry Potter existed. Do you, are you a fan of those as well? I just went and saw the second one, yeah. I mean, I love Newt Scamander, the main okay. character. I think okay, he's just Newt. such a quirky main character. I, all I want to do is amazing. freaking, I just want to, I want Takes him to. Takes care of I'm all just, the creatures. He is amazing. Takes but I also just want him to kind of stand up straight and freaking, I just want to take a brush to but that, that's his what's hair. so great I want to just, like, about him. I lick my hand and just That's like, what's so freaking, great about him. fix your hair. <laughs> so many main characters are those classic hero guys uh -huh. who just are, 
strong and built and I'm a man and this. And he's just the opposite of that. Newt. And that's what makes him amazing is that he's not this classic. Yeah. He's kind of, he would usually be a supporting character, but in this, he's the main. And that's it's cool. just really cool. Yeah. Okay, so it's kind of blurred here. Crimes of Grin Grindelwald. Yes, Crimes of Grindelwald. Awesome. Because Grindelwald was the bad guy before Voldemort. Oh. This is all pre okay. Harry Potter, pre <laughs> The Boy Who Lived. <laughs> yeah, and that's good. So this is actually these are actually screenplays written by J.K. Rowling, by the way, aren't they? Yeah, every everything that has to do with it is written by her. Okay. She doesn't. I mean, she's brilliant outsource that it. way because she doesn't <laughs> outsource anything, right? And Johnny Depp is in the new movie. Yeah, he's Grindelwald. He's the bad guy. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> see, now you have to go see it. Well, the reason I like the, these... See, and the blur helps. Oh, yeah, for sure. Just kind of makes it add. And that blur, so does that uh, lens blur, does it blur the whole image equally? Yes, so okay. it's going to blur that whole layer. So you didn't want to do that, you'd have to do it with you know, the blur tool over here. You know what would be good though too? Um, can we just undo this blur and try mm -hmm. try something else and maybe make it white? Can we? Can you make it, yeah. brighten it up? Mm -hmm. So, and, um, cause I, because also, why don't I add another one too and just go through the oh, yeah. steps one more time? Yeah, too, and then I have then, an idea when you get to the blur part. Okay, it'll be right now if I can keep my picture in front of me. <laughs> ah, that's, that is when it's running away on you. Oh no. It's getting away. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And um, then make it uh, white or something, just so we can see it better. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good one. Let's do that guy. Oh, wait. Yeah. There we go. Well, now, oh, it's not in front. There you go. Remember where your legs cool. are. Cool. Awesome. So let's go um, and make it do a blur, but let's go to, or and you can morph it now all you want if you want to. Yeah, to I'll just, I'll edit it a little bit, warp it just so they can see that again, but you know, just kind of play around with it till it seems right to you. And that's kind of the thing about Photoshop. It's when does it look right to you? Learn these tools so mm -hmm. then you can see what looks right to you. Yeah, totally. That's why this is, this is such a good example. Um, so, but when it comes, don't do that blur. Don't do lens okay. blur. Go back into the same, and actually, with the, what I would do is I would convert to convert this layer to layer to a smart object. Mm -hmm. Real fast, if you could, and then go to filter, blur gallery, and blur gallery. Okay. Do like a, a fun one, right? Yeah, spin let's, blur. Well, I was thinking, do a field, do field blur. Yeah. And so what this will allow us to do, we can put these little dots. So I was thinking this dot might be up here and really blurry. And then we'll add so another right. dot down here that will be less blurry. Because how, how smoke usually works is it's going to be really it's tight. It's going to be in there at some, right. And yeah. some points it's going to be showing. And then some points it's going to be kind of not as clear. Yeah. And right. like, so I, like, I think as it trails up, it's going to get more blurry. And yeah. that's what this allows you to do, which is kind of neat. Um, I, I don't usually actually use this. But yeah, isn't now it I cool though? Like this whole. You can take the blur down right here. Yeah. Right where this little white guy yeah. is right here. Yeah, totally. Take it down to eight. And then really crank up that oh, that other one before you get out of there. Yeah, crank that all the way up. There oh. you go. See what's happening. And you you do have one right there. So that oh, one's. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Looks like that one might be stopping it, it. You could always select yeah. that one and delete it or change it or whatever. But like, see how it's affecting. Yeah, but it. I see what you mean. Okay. So yeah, because this stamp is very much really just all the same opacity or, or right. what, you know, whatever. Right. So. And, you know, it. just playing around with it. And that's the thing, you know, we all use so many different tools and it's just doing what works for you, but then also being open to learning new ones. Because yeah. now I'm definitely going to go home and try this. Oh man. And like, I don't even know, like all those options off to the side. So the name of this tool again. It is the... Uh, I forgot already. I just know where it is. <laughs> Field blur. Field blur. But they all of them in the blur gallery it's under do the, the blur same gallery. thing. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. See. Those will all do the same thing. Screenshot. Screenshot that. <laughs> and uh, tilt shift is always fun. 
That's uh, one where it gives you the it. line. Oh yeah, the line. Okay, I've worked with this one before. Right? That is very, and that's why I usually say, you know, convert to a smart object and then you can use anything in the blur gallery. See, it should be, tr oh yeah, so you have a, mo wait, hold on. No, oh, that is so cool. So it's, it's really fascinating. You're able to use tilt shift, field blur, iris blur, all of them within this menu. That's cool. You can crank up the blur on this side. Oh, so if it's clicked on it, you can just do this. You don't have to do the wheelie. You could just oh, yeah. take each one up, yeah. which is nice. Yeah, totally. And that's usually how they how you can create that like small world look that people right do um, so I'll just oh double, like that yeah. yeah so I'll just double click on this so again this is just the tilt shift cranked it up like you said using these controls um, and positioning it like so let's undo that but this is the fall off if I can only grab this point there's the fall off that you're controlling. Yeah. And uh, the problem with this, so this is what I, I would I think I did do. use that once on a photo because when I took the photo, it didn't have enough of a blur in the background, so I was using that to kind of mess with it. Okay, gotcha. So I would do this real fast. It's just been a long time. I'll, I'll click OK. Anything. And then I would actually, actually, you know what, I can probably paint on with a different brush, or basically I would mask out this building right here. So. Yeah, get out of my way. Make it smaller. Get out of my way. Accidentally click on the wrong tool. The pressure is getting to me. <laughs> but ultimately you would like, you know, this, if this is in the field of view, I would change that. So I'm just trying to make that look better. <laughs> Anyways, you get the idea. I get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do as I say, not as I do. So. Do as I say. Right. Oh, and then there's also like, so, oh, and you actually mentioned this yesterday. Um, Did I? Yeah, using, I think it was yesterday or the day before, but I think it was yesterday, uh, when you're working on a bird and you were adding like a motion blur to those wings. Just to the wings. Yeah. So Maybe I should show that just to kind of see can, how. You can, by all means, make a bird fly. <laughs> and I think, but I think you executed it very nicely because you did it just like a little soft blur. Maybe one bird is. One bird is shouldn't have that. Yeah. And that's the one closest to the subject. Yeah. You know, so they kind of look like they're both in focus, and then the other one can kind of have that. And then you can blur the whole, another bird in the background, the whole entire one. You know, you can play around with it just so that mm -hmm. it looks like how it would look when you're taking a picture. Yeah. I like it. Let's see. And... you happen to have that example. The bird? Yeah, I'm gonna look for it right now. Or a bird in general would be good. I can actually do it with this, this bird from the photo yesterday. This one right here. It's already a little bit blurred, but let's just try it. There you go. Hi, buddy. You're going to make a, bl a blurred? Instead of it's a bird, it's a blurred. I'm going to make a blurred. <laughs> Perfect dad joke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so good at him. <laughs> this is the right thing. <laughs> That's very much my, um, mm. like, the jokes I like are suitable for eight years old, eight year olds. That's all my, my jokes are. <laughs> suitable for you. Yeah, I'm and just me. like, and you. Eight year olds and, and yeah. me. Because <laughs> yeah. I laugh at them every time. Like all of mine are very just PG, just good <laughs> humor. Good. Like I love them. Nobody's, I don't know why. Let's see. Oh, now I don't even, see, I don't even know what I'm doing now because I was listening to you. 
<laughs> Kevin, Kevin Lee is in the house. Nice. Uh, so to answer your question, uh, it is a photo in Photoshop that was cut out. But Kevin's been, Kevin, you've been with us before, haven't you? I know you have, maybe you weren't, I don't think you were with me, but I think you've been on the live, on the stream before. So you were doing like UX, UI type stuff. So welcome back. Welcome. Whoa, the I'm into this. So, <laughs> and you're in the select and mask. Yeah, I'm just okay. in, I'm just, it's just gonna be a quick run through of just Please what do. they can do, what they can do. So on um, layer mask it, you know, just create a new layer really quickly because it collected pretty much all that and that's going to be blurred. Um, so I'm just gonna go with the motion blur I use just because if I can click on the right thing. Um, see, you can kind of mess with the angle a little bit. So that kind of looks odd, right? This doesn't look like it's actually flying. But you know, and then you can also mess with how blurred do you want these wings. Look at those. They're starting to look really like they have a lot of movement. I just keep doing this when I yeah. talk about flying. Do you ever do that? Like <laughs> even if you're if you're e even if you're like working on a person, <laughs> I know you do that though. Oh yeah. Like you're imitating whatever the picture is. Like if you're working on and you want I her talk with my hands a lot. So okay. I'll just say like <laughs> yes. the wings, the, these you know, things you know, that the I'm wings. talking about. It's <laughs> true. Okay, so kind of blurred. Oh no, what happened? Hold on, let me Because it's a, it's a blurred. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. And... There we go, I'm just gonna motion blur these guys. Whoa. So it's gonna look like a little much just because I have the other one showing up behind it. So let's yeah. take that off really quick so we can just see. See, it's looking a little nicer. So if you bring that, just say, okay, that, that one's working. Bring this one back on. Now it's too many wings. So layer mask that. Soft round brush. And, um, you know, getting rid of, oh, that's, yeah, we don't want to paint it white, but go back to the layer mask. And, um, you know, get rid of some of the harsh edges, the wings. I'm trying to do the same thing, but I have a butterfly. With a butterfly. Mm -hmm. With butterflies, I usually just motion blur the whole thing. Just because. They're too tiny, They're huh? so tiny in it. Doesn't Not really mine. Work. Mine's the size of a, a large building, actually. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> yours is really big. <laughs> really huge. I, I said that and then I looked over at yours and I'm like, I wanna oh, have it land on that this That butterfly building. is as big as the whole building. I'm still working on I it. I spoke too soon. I don't, I don't think it's on the right color, but. Yeah, and then I want to try to show something. Okay, so kind of, if you go back, oh wait, oh, fireworks. Oh, oh shoot, hello, that's right, chat and win. It's time for chat and win, everybody, so here we go. Welcome back. Those fireworks are all about chat and win, and what that means, you have to just say something in chat. Preferable, preferably eligible words. Eligible? Legible? Legible words? Because legible, legible, legible words too. are, exactly, <laughs> are eligible. So we know oh. humans are at the other end of your keyboard, and we will draw a name at random. So be like, moo cards today. That's exactly what you're winning. We're going to pull a name, and you win uh, $30 in credit for moo.com. That will satisfy all your printing needs. Somebody put eligible words. Eligible words. That's <laughs> that this, works that, too. That's totally eligible. <laughs> and el eligible words. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> are words that are on the market. I'm an eligible word. I'm an eligible. <laughs> 
<laughs> that <was> anyway, <laughs> and legible. So yes. Um, yes, Moo Credit is what you will win. We'll pull that name at random, uh, based on uh, whoever gives us the nice compliments on our hair. <laughs> You are looking good today. His we hair. got a good. Well, look at this whole color scheme. Totally works. By the way, even the color of this. What I you didn't have plan on, that though. That's like what this color was like would you call that? The last shirt I have for the week. You know, it <laughs> looks so good. It matches almost your color palette for your like your Instagram is very like soft tones. It's probably how I shop, you know. Yeah. And I don't shop Perpetu often, so <laughs> I probably shop like, you know, a few times a year, and so. <laughs> Uh, I probably just shop in my color palette. You you do. <laughs> you have a color scheme. More I asked my daughter it. what my favorite colors were, and she looks around her house and she goes, um, yeah, I would say that's blue and yellow and red because everything is set in primary colors. Oh, really? That's funny. Just kind of like all similar to that. And then she looked at my photos and she goes, yeah, mom, I think you just create everything in your favorite colors all the time. Right? Well, that's the thing. Like, it's just, you don't you even a, mean to. It's you just something you don't even palette. think about. Yeah, Into but you know, it. I just kind of say, "Oh, this looks good to me right now." Yeah, I don't know. You know who looks good to me is Mickey. Mickey, Mickey <laughs> Amo. Congratulations, Mickey. You are the uh, you are the winner of chat and win. You get thirty dollars in credit at moo.com. <laughs> and Congrats. you can see right here, uh, everybody um, can actually get a discount. So moo.com forward slash Adobe Live will get you, I think, 15% off. Uh, but go there and whatever it says there is correct. So don't listen to me. It should be 15%. But that even works as well. So Can we congrats see to everybody. Yes, congrats. congrats. to Mickey. Moo's and awesome. Yes, totally into it. With that. Uh, oh, I'm still, I'm still working on it because I'm going to change that. I'm going to change. I just really want you to show your layers of butterflies right now. Right. Because this is oh, just too much. This is what I'm obsessed. <laughs> I'm just like obsessed with butterflies, as you can see. There, he, I'll just you go have through like and three or four, four on there just piled on yeah, each other. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But I thought, okay, well, my surrealistic idea is like have this butterfly kind of flying and like maybe like landing Attacking on this the building. Attacking the entire city. Yeah, just <laughs> running away. You think it's, oh, cute and Killer pretty. butterfly. But if you look at it, it is a scary creature up close. It is. This is why it's so beautiful that it's small. <laughs> exactly. Because that's the thing of nightmares right there. Right. <laughs> small. Yeah. Small means cute usually. Yeah, otherwise, it would terrify us. Well, and I feel bad for the moth because they're so beautiful too, but they get no credit. It's oh, okay. all about the butterfly. Everybody's all about the butterfly. What about the moth? That's true. And moths can be beautiful. Moths like, can be close, awesome. For sure. And they meet your, your color palette requirement, I feel. <laughs> like they're totally your color palette. Yeah, I'm team moth right now. But I do love my butterflies too. <laughs> uh, shift command V to paste in place. I was going to do like one thing really fast. So like it, it, I'm going to show you a, a different type of uh, blur that you can do uh, directionally. And How is so this I guy going to land? These. I don't know. I will adjust <laughs> it here in a little bit. Like there's a lot I need to do, but let me just tilt this and I'll just show you. Like actually, no. Let's take this and let's just merge them all because take this filter. Blur gallery, we'll do a path blur. Nice. Okay. So we actually want it to go a specific direction. So here's the path blur. It gives you, oops, gives you this path. And then you can select. And the big thing is. Which just was a moth, because then you could say mothzilla, but there we go. butterflyzilla doesn't really work. Yeah. <laughs> But I could use this one right here. This could actually, I could just set this to zero, for instance. So that one, take that speed down to zero. And this this could kind of be my constraint, basically, right here. So you can constrain and this certain section to not being blurred. Yeah. And then this one, I can So it's just an, it's a different way to get to kind of making those wings Yeah. Blurry. That's that's the idea. And the cool thing is, is like, blurred. it's doing this, this blur this direction. I'm doing it in a curve. Motion mm -hmm. blur will do one direction. This can do curves, basically. Right. 
which is nice. So well, anyway, we raise um, we raise little butterflies every year as like a tradition. You so do. That's why I started incorporating them into our. I mean, not a lot. You know, they come. Mm-hmm. You can get them really easily, and then we set them all free. And it's supposed to be this big event every time. Usually it's only like five or so. Uh-huh. And we go to set them free, and I'm out there with my camera really excited, and I never get anything. They just are like, bye. <laughs> oh, you like you, uh, you want them to say thank you? I want them to stick around. No. Because the first year I ever did it, one actually stuck around, and we had to literally eventually blow it off my daughter's finger because it didn't want to go anywhere. Oh, and then, really? And then another year, one of the wings was um, deformed, so we actually kept him. And he was the longest living butterfly. This guy lived for three or four months with us. Oh, wow. Yeah. You have butterflies as a friend. That's like, that's some sort of, uh, you know, Snow White business. <laughs> they're magical. Right? And they're also like, easy s- pets. She's singing in the <laughs> in the forest and like there's birds landing on it. It's like you, like butterflies are hanging out on your on your fingertip. I wish that was the dream, but most of them just take they off. Just take they're off. like, thanks for the watermelon you sliced for me every morning. I don't care. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> That's funny. Um, just kind of switch. Oh, just I'm just going to switch back over now that okay. I have this little bit more squared away. So again, this is the constrained. It's not moving here. I took That's this tip. That's awesome. Then you can just do the tip of the wings. Yeah. So like this is moving that way. This one's moving that way, and you kind of have. Potentially something that just feels like more, uh, right. potentially more realistic, depending on what you're trying to do. So I love that. Very I'm actually cool. going to use that now too. Yeah, and it's all <laughs> it's all this path path of the path blur, you know. Yeah, um, exactly, and you'd be able to control where that is. But mm-hmm. if you just want all the wings to move, and you can separate it from the body really quick, um, the motion. Bl- Blur is pretty fast as well. Oh, blur yeah. Blur blur. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, at the, depending on the size, like this makes sense for mine because I want this to be really huge. Yeah. For a smaller object like what you're dealing with, like nobody's going to. Yeah, for it's this. almost use, don't get lost too in Animals the for my photos are usually fairly small. So it's not. Um, and that's also another thing about Photoshopping is learn what to spend the most details on. Okay. Yeah. Learn where to put most of your time. You know, uh-huh. and that would be the bigger subjects, the things that are there. Yeah, just just like you do. I noticed you knew, used another element in yours as well. Like if you, so there's you the wings those. are now moving. Oh, I like that. Looks good. They're moving now a little bit. Give them a little bit more movement. Done. And, and you done. can add some grain in there too. Should I just show how I do that? Yeah. I know Ted was showing that too. Oh, I'm on the. Wrong one. <laughs> I do that all the time. I'm, oh, yeah, you do what I always do because I'm accidentally on the, you know, layer mask. Mm-hmm. Add that little bit of, little mm, bit of green. Back. There we go. Olivia says you can paint plant native plants. Oh, I love that. For the butterflies and maybe they'll stay. If I had a green thumb, I would do that. I keep trying to keep plants alive, and I don't know if it's Colorado's dryness or what. Yeah. I'm just gonna blame Colorado. You yes. can. <laughs> I've tried really hard. I got a fern that I was so excited to have. I was just over the moon, mm-hmm. and it died so fast on me. I even put a little humidifier underneath it. Did oh, everything to you just were keep like, it alive. This is my plant. It's gonna... I had waited so long for this fern, and it just started dying. <laughs> there was no way to save it. Oh, man. But, um, yeah, that, that's a great idea. I know, I just want them to stick around a little longer because I put so much time into watching them go from caterpillars to butterflies. Right. And feeding them watermelon and all the things, and then they just... They just they just, <laughs> just just abandon you like without any thought. I'm like, at They're least like, let me get a out. photo of you really quick. But no. <laughs> oh man. Okay, um, so that I one's d- done. But uh, on the subject of butterflies and on the subject of new features, do you mind if I show you something? You love showing me the new features. Sorry. I've been working with Photoshop CC 2019 for a little over two days now. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was gonna <laughs> say. We just. So this is something that's really cool. So this this butterfly, if you wanted to do a content aware fill, kind of gets to be a whole thing. And 
You really do love butterflies. Look at you. I know, I do. Look at the whole right hand side. Uh, I went to, <laughs> sorry, I went to this kind of fast. You don't do a fill. You have to go to it this way, by the way. Don't use the, uh, con don't use any of the brushes or anything. Go to uh, edit, content aware fill. Because the issue with this is I need to fill it, but I really want to take it from this side and not just any old part. So it's like you go to content aware fill. <sighs> Oops, wrong layer, sorry. And then you can sample from where you want it to take from. Right? So it's like, hey, don't don't take from over here. Take from this side. It's like a whole other version of content aware. Right? This whole menu. And by the way, I'm selecting mirror as well. So you can mirror and this, is this brand other new? side. And this is brand new. Because I have never seen this. Yeah, I would go in and clean Taking out. Notes. Take take away all of this that I don't want it to sample from, right? It's typically not going to get a lot of this. Right. And take from this side, and this is where I'd add and subtract just by holding down the Alt key to take that portion. So that'll start coming in and looking much better, essentially, is what's happening as I take away more of it. Okay. That's a really cool. great new feature. That's kind of cool. Because if you need to ever content aware fill something that's like maybe in a sphere or follows a curve, that's where this comes in handy. And again, all I did is turn on Because mirror. like I said earlier, content aware can have a little bit of a mind of its own sometimes when yeah. you're just doing that. You'll yep. go back a few times and, you know, kind of feel it out, but. Exactly. It does. It can have a mind of its own. You could typically sample holding down the I'm alt key. I'm in love key. with this, actually. This will be probably the number one thing I'm using right now. Right? See, look. So we're, yeah. It's, yeah, isn't that kind of nice? It's really cool. Yeah. I think I'm just taking away more of that. And this is just a rough example. But oh, Carl that. asked, any way to hide all there on that go. mask instead of having to manually exclude everything? Um, is there a, I could probably use the selection tool, the lasso tool over here. I don't know a shortcut key for invert. Um, but yeah, a lasso tool to select larger areas. So that's what I could have done. But you were just having fun. I was right? just having fun painting. <laughs> yeah. Just paint and away, Paul. Just paint away. I feel like you you've done this before too. Did you like output to? This is in some like out, yeah, new output layer, to your new layer. Actually, what I would love. Well, yeah, no, that's actually pretty good. Output to new layer. You know, you get the idea. Just fill it in. Go from there. Butterflies. Oh, the butterfly is beautiful. Okay, well, we've stared at this photo long enough. So, not saving it. on purpose. What other ones you have? To, are these? Wait, go open that up back up. Oh, we're just going to go through. I'm going to oh, show you. Gonna I open was going to show you. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yes. Yes. So, that check works. this out. There's my husband's arm. <laughs> yep. Poor and a guy. Book. Well, Poor guy, the one time he's in a photo, <laughs> it's just like, he's got to get removed. <laughs> you're like, you're yeah. just ruthless. No, I know. So um, with this one, I planned on taking a photo of the book and then putting it into a scene with my daughter, so making the book bigger. But when I got home, I really loved this landscape I had gotten on the rock, mm -hmm. and I just thought that was a lot cooler than the landscape she had behind her, so I decided to minimize her. Oh, and so I she's figured, small in this environment? Yes, but I didn't plan that. I just kind of did that because you just kind of roll with it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I thought this was more interesting than the yeah. one she it, was on. Even, even the angle you took that at, it, it already looks like, and you planned that obviously, because it looks very large. Looks like, is that what you're going for? It looks like a large book. Yeah, but I was, but no, actually, when I took the shot, I wanted to make the book bigger. So I was just going to take it out and put it into her scene. Okay. But then I got home and I was going through and I was like, you know what? I like this scene better. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to minimize her. So change of plans. Yeah. No end And <laughs> they were both on similar, um, like she was standing on the rocks, but obviously she was a lot bigger and there was a lot more going on behind her than this kind of blank canvas. Mm -hmm. So, um, and yeah. what I'm creating so I went over cutouts a lot already, so I'll just kind of bring some of these things in. Yeah, 
Let's do your thing. But again, <laughs> arm is leaving. Sorry there, buddy. Sorry, <laughs> hubby. Like, yes. Yeah, he's like, your arm is gone. Fi finally gets oh, look at that arm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. A little content aware. Yeah, a little content aware arm. <laughs> Actually, it just looks like a tree branch now or something. Again, I perfectly cut this out the first time around, and then, of course, this one. I'm just. Yeah, like, like when you're in a rush, I know. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to work. Well, I'm also going to be adding the book back in because I did cut the book out, which actually I could just do really quickly just because. Now I'm in the zone, so you have to talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, and I just. And you like, are too. You're. I'm in the zone. You're still making yeah. the butterfly. <laughs> but what? Butterzilla? <laughs> See, that the doesn't butterzilla. work as well as Mothzilla. Yeah. Butterzilla just sounds really cute. See, mm. butterflies just sound really cute. That's why. They butterfly. Butterfly. But they used and to be called something else. you can use the pen tool else. for this, too. You can use the pen tool. I think butterfly is but a new. It's on a white background, so it's really easy to remove um, on, its, on its own. It's just easy in that way. Almost perfectly cut out already. So just layer mask it, bring it over. Oh wait, what did I do? Go back. Don't do that. <laughs> I'll just put since it's already pretty perfect. Straight lines. Just put it on its own thing. We're not even gonna use the book yet. Still removing his arm. Actually, too, you can use the clone stamp when you're getting really close. I need to move closer in. I know, you used to work it on a very large Yeah, that's been interesting. Screen. I thought butterflies, oh man, I, I'm not gonna. You thought they were? Some, oh, some bring the opacity up to 100%. The flow's at 100% as well. Just because I'm just, and this doesn't actually have to be perfect. A new sky will be going in there. I just don't want you to see the arm through the sky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then bring the hardness up a little bit. Size down a little bit. Just kind of remove that. Into it. This is what I do. Just do the same. Oh, and a little hardness is too much to see because it's kind of nice to have the hardness lower just so that the ed edges are softer, more feathered. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Victoria, let us know. Uh, here's actually, Julia. When you sketch your composition before you shoot the photos, do you already plan the scale and perspective of, of all the objects? That depends because in this, in this image, I expected the book to just be taken quickly out of this and put in the other scene. So I had to completely rethink the concept. And a lot of times I'll just think on the fly too when we're out there because it's based on weather, because it's based on lighting, because it's based on scouting out a location. So you have to be willing to kind of switch up your ideas. But yes, I do sketch them out. They're really funny looking sketches. I uh -huh. should have brought one in. Yeah. They're just little stick figures. And it'll be yeah. like sun or like this one. And hopefully the light comes in from this side. But I switch up my ideas constantly, even yeah. even when I'm out there. Yeah. and Because like, I'll go to this... a location, it won't work. And I'll yeah. have to switch it up. And even when you get back. Because even in this case, you're, once you got back, you like you yeah. then changed the idea. I changed the whole thing. Yeah, that's cool. But the idea was to have her with a giant book. So the basic idea was the same, except I switched out what was I going to be minimizing, things like that. So uh, looks like Ariel brings up the patch tool, which is part of like the content aware family that also right. Works. The patch tool works as well, but for this one, since I'm not super concerned about how the background's gonna look, mm -hmm. you would definitely want to go patch tool, content aware, and things like that if you're gonna be staying on the same background. But this one's just easy because I can kind of draw with it really quickly. But the patch tool, you're right, absolutely, and. Um, 
yeah, so I mean, I'm just getting in there and removing this arm really quickly. How but are you gonna get along that edge? How I'm gonna, gonna, I'll do that in just a sec, but I also am gonna bring in, because also, let me see here. When um, I bring in the extra book, all these things are so small. Is that a book? <laughs> It's like the tiniest dot. It is so little. <laughs> I'm gonna look up here because yeah. I can actually see it Oh yeah, see that's true. That monitor over there is yeah. bigger than oh. this. Is this my book I cut out? No. Um, let's bring the sky in really quick. So yes, you have more than 30 minutes to submit your portfolio. Thank you, Tim, for that reminder. So you can see the schedule on the other side of us over there. Basically, use the portfolio review tab on, that's right next to chat. Submit your portfolio right there. Again, it's right over here, right above where you're typing. Go over to portfolio review, submit it, and we will pick a couple of those portfolios and review them in 30 minutes. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be cool. And typically we like to pick something that's, you know, in the realm of what the our guest is working in, so hopefully oh, really? some. Yeah, it'll be like Photoshop compositing type stuff. Since, nice. Since you're here. Oh yeah, well that makes sense. Right. right? We don't want to have you <laughs> review gonna... you you user interface. How could I how could anything. I be reviewing somebody who's illustrating something? Yeah. Looks great. Yeah, great job. <laughs> great. Great. Can't do it myself. You would be like, why didn't you just take a photograph of that? That would be your yeah. That'd be your comment. <laughs> It's so funny. Let's see here. Let's get it. Again, these edits can take a long time, so not running through the whole thing, but doing my best. And the opacity changes. I'm loving this that as sky this. there. And I'm actually gonna be adding some fog in, so I don't want to remove all this next to the area because I kind of want it to add to this to the fog in a little bit. Or in a quick bit because I don't have mm -hmm. much time. <laughs> no, I like it. Soon. Good to have you here, Rasim. Good to have you here. If you did, if you're just joining us, yeah, you want to say thank hello. Thank you for joining. I should look. Thank you for joining. <laughs> the old the Adobe Live is not feeling well today, so he is not in the office. He's out. So we had to quarantine him, lock him down, but. Lock him down. Yeah, can't let him go Lock anywhere. him in a room. Sorry. He can't talk. I love the uh, the gradation on this and like the sky and all this is looking good. It's kind of wanted. I wanted to make sure it had all that, but I'm actually adding stars too. For fun. Okay, into it. And you can still see that weird mm -hmm. bit of arm. I'm gonna grab that out. But bring this over. See, I don't have a specific way I work. So this is actually a stock image. So you can. I don't take pictures of stars, so. Okay. I mean, I try, I've dabbled. Yeah, <laughs> like, That's not I really, like they're well, not again, that fancy, need, and they're, it just you know, really never in focus. You. Well, it would, except for the fact that it's definitely not what I see myself as being good at. <laughs> yeah. It takes a lot of patience and practice, and I have quite a few friends who are really good at it, but. And you, like, yeah, you need, the right type of equipment. You have to be really dedicated. And to maybe it. A, a touch longer exposure, so you need like a, you know like a tripod, right? Right, exactly. That sort of thing. And uh, let's see here. I don't want to leave. I just want to re-edit all my things every day on here. <laughs> I don't want to leave. I said I don't want to leave Adobe. I just uh, edit all of my things on here every day. By all means, <laughs> you can hang out with us. All day long. Now I'm used ah, to it. Now I feel a little bit more used to it. Right? Now sitting there with my snacks by myself in the corner of my room won't feel as fun. I know. <laughs> mm. Except for the podcast part and the music. Yeah, that's that part's cool. awesome. That part's worth it. What podcast did you say you listened to yesterday? I asked you that yesterday. I listened what to quite a few different ones. Um, I started listening to, I've listened to Joe Rogan and also um, 
lore. I really oh, like I that lore. with Aaron Mankey. I got that's what got me obsessed on podcasts is I started listening to his podcast oh, last okay. year and I ran through them all. Um, there's quite a few different ones that around um, Halloween time and actually just every time. I mean, I listened to it yesterday. <laughs> it's a anything yeah. ghost. Anything ghost. That one's kind of fun. But uh, Joe Rogan's cool because he brings all different sorts of people on there. Okay. But and lore is, is fun funny? just because I like history a lot. Yeah. And he kind of brings the lore part of history into it and just says, you know, this is what people thought of this. Here are the facts. And what do mm -hmm. you think? So I just kind of like that. Yeah, I, I like I like his too. Does a great job storytelling. Sim, similar he to he is a like, great storyteller. Uh, he also started Cabinet of Curiosities. Yeah, so yeah. that one I can actually doesn't get as creepy. And yeah, you it can listen. I can listen to it with my daughter a lot because it doesn't okay. get as like. So that one can go on in the car. Oh, but cool. Lore, she goes. I can handle lore. I can handle ghosts. And then it'll get to bedtime, and she goes. Mom, don't leave me. Mm. I don't want the light off. I don't. So I said, no. Yeah. You so can't you handle can't, lore. <laughs> sorry, you can't handle it. No, but um, she's only ever listened to one that I had already listened to, and it was a pretty light lore one, just really easy. And it was just, she said, she always puts on the brave face, but then. Oh, that's so cute. But you know, Voldemort doesn't scare her for some reason. Interested in any podcast recommendations you might have in chat as well? Yeah, please let me know because I'm always looking for a new podcast got, to listen to. And I, I really like when, when I mean, and Joe Rogan's are cool just because they go on for hours. So you can kind of pick up where you left off and almost comes like I got, a I have, I have, I have three for you. Okay. One go. related to Joe Rogan, do uh -huh. Comedy Bang Bang. Comedy Bang Bang is also an interview comedy um uh, I'm podcast. Gonna, I'm gonna take a note. Yeah, and then all the famous comedians are on there, and um, so yeah, comedy bang bang, and half of it they actually do like an improv for part of it, where they improv being a can of Coke, and it's hilarious. I love so that. So there's a whole improv segment that they do. That's um, awesome. And uh, I'm surprised you don't listen to my favorite murder. I haven't listened to that. I have heard of it. I yeah, you to need it. A, I so. listen to it. It's hilarious. So, open yeah. to any other suggestions. What was, what was that one again? Um, my, my favorite fa murder. My favorite murder, yeah. Really, really well known, really well done. The, the two ladies are hilarious in it, so it's like they even out the scariness with their sense of humor. And that'll be but good for later night. There's a lot of cussing and stuff. When I'm it. facing my, you know, corner of the room, and it's late at night and everyone's asleep and I have like anything ghost on and someone's telling their creepy ghost story from around the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is awesome until I'm ready to go to bed. And then I'm like, why did I do that? What? Yeah, <laughs> trust me. Especially if you live alone. I live alone. I'm like, oh, why did I leave? Why? I think I'm going to stay up for a little longer. <laughs> why did I do that to myself? Okay. <laughs> is the rock part of the book photo or was it separately added? No, the rock is part of it, so let's check out the um, beginning photo. Which is why you like this, because you that's like that That's why I liked it, yeah, that's exactly why I chose it, because I got home, and I wish I had the original image of her, because I went through the edits, and so um, I had to pick what I had had on this computer. But um, the edit of her, uh, or the photo of her, actually had, she was standing on these rocks, obviously much bigger than this book. <laughs> so when I took the picture of her, a lot of the background was there, like uh, trees, there were trees in the distance and different cloud kind of things going on and a different whole skyline. So I had bent down to take the shot close up of the book, got home and said, I think this is cooler. It kind of makes me look like I'm not in Colorado anymore. Just a different mm -hmm. kind of landscape for me. So that's kind of what I was talking about yesterday about liking scenes like this where you minimize the subject because you can it really gives you so much opportunity if you're actually shooting too to kind of make a big scene a make a big scene mm -hmm. make a big scene from the from minimizing and it can look entirely different from where you were because if I could show you where I was it had a lake and trees and all sorts of things but you can't really see it because the water recedes um, hmm. in the summer and so it was left with all these rocks exposed. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, it does kind of have like an alien landscape or some. That's kind of what, type. and so um, I decided to add in a moon and everything behind here. So that was really similar. So let me show you. Which 
see what I'm creating? This right here. Wait. Oh, okay. Wow. So that's kind of what it turned into. Looks very far off right now, but. <laughs> I like it. But, you know, giant moon, and then I brought her in, and I actually, let me zoom in really quick. Since I don't have the original shot of her, I was just gonna pull her over anyway. But see how she is right there? I actually cut out her hand. Let me see, I'm gonna hide all layers. So if I bring her in, see her hands? Just look at this piece, I didn't catch this but her hand is um, there and it's separated so that I was able to bring her in and she looked like she was holding it. And then I brought that other book in so that it would look, um, so it would actually be straight lines. Because when you take it out, you can see up close that the book doesn't have straight lines. Hold on. And it hid the other part of her hand too. Hmm. See? Yeah the book there and then adds it in straight lines. Yeah, very, it's like pretty pretty subtle. Oh, look at that but... giant. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> look out, lady. There's a giant hand behind you. Welcome, oh, Hamza. Wait. Hamza. That was Good a wolf here. I was messing around with and didn't end up using. Happens all the time. <laughs> and uh, uh, one thing I was gonna say about using animals when they're far away and they're gonna be blurred too, you don't have to worry about um, using the, you know, getting all the hairs out and all of this, if you're gonna be blurring it in the background, that's actually a really good way to start with animals too, you're kind of making them in the distance and kind of oh. seeing how you can play around with colors and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Um, so you're not focusing on every detail of hair, but yet, you know, um, looks more believable there. I love it, I love, I love that. That just adds a lot of, I mean, having the wolf back there just adds a I'm whole another this. layer, obviously, of the story. Right, because I have this little fairy tale story I'm doing, and um, the little fairy tale story, I, I want the stars to show up a little bit more. But the fairy tale story I've, or the fairy tale series I've kind of been working on is going around, so I showed a little bit of Cinderella yesterday and doing a little Red Riding Hood, and I did a little, um, also did a, was it Snow White? Uh, little edit. So I just kind of have fun with that. Yeah, I like it. The I mean, most, you can tell. The most magical of all. Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> the original it. magic. Uh huh. OG magic. OG magic, <laughs> and and they're in the public domain too. So that's right. a good thing. You have your, you know. Right yeah, to use public. It. Exactly. It's true. I could create with them. Yeah. <laughs> and so can all of you. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Public domain. That's key. Moonir, thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, yeah, Moonir, thank you. Hamza's, uh, his dream is to, uh, uh, is, his dream is being a graphic design. Wow, okay, we can make you, looks like you already are a graphic design according to your little avatar picture. But uh, maybe being a graphic designer. That's why we have these various challenges. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, next week on Monday, we're starting a new, uh, design challenge, so a daily design challenge uh, f around UX and UI design. That sounds but, really fun. Yeah, it is pretty. It is pretty cool, and it goes for like eight days. Start on Monday, you know, finish the following week, and uh, but it's just a chance for people to kind of like get get their hands dirty and build a portfolio and stuff like that. That's what we do with the daily challenges too. And like that's kind of what I yesterday. feel like about my Instagram is it's ever, ever evolving because it, my portfolio is ever evolving, and so yeah. being able to just kind of keep adding to that, you know, uh, looking at work that I did six months ago to work that I'm doing now. Yeah. And the tools that I'm now taking from you. Yeah, by all means. <laughs> and that's why we're all here. Right. Like, it's, a, it's just amazing. Like, everybody, like, works differently. And you'll, you, you would think just because somebody's really good at compositing that they know everything, they no, may or may not. you the tools that you're comfortable yeah, with. Exactly. And then, um, you, like you said, you, you said that you could tell I've been using Photoshop for a while because oh, I yeah. use some of like the older tools. Um, and you just kind of get stuck in those ways. So it's really good to be here for the week too and be learning different tools along the way. Yeah, and, and it's funny because like there's, no, there's nothing magical Photoshop is magical, right? but you just know how to use the tools that you need to know how to use. And that's the advice I give to a lot of people. Goodbye, Julia, thank you. Um, but yeah, I 
that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about with just, in the beginning, it can feel so overwhelming and there's so many tools and the tools are ever evolving. Like look mm -hmm. at all the things they've added. Um, and so really figuring out the piece you wanna do, what you wanna create, and learning the tools for that specific creation, and learning mm -hmm. what you need to get from point A to point B. And then you'll look back in a year, six months, three months, and say, oh my gosh, look at all these tools I've learned mm -hmm. just by the default of trying to adopt different ones along the way. If you go try to learn everything at once, you're just gonna be completely overwhelmed. And I don't think- And you'll never use- you'll never you're use not, you're so not many of them. You're not using everything at once. Right. So there's many of them that you won't use. I mean, there's ones that I'm learning even now that I wasn't using at all a year ago, right? Yeah. So, um, it's true. I'm Bye, into it. Anthony. And <laughs> it's tough. That's why. Me. That's why if you ever take uh, like a an, like a Adobe certification exam, right? To an ACE for Photoshop is so hard because you're not doing. You're not using the print graphic design side of this of of Photoshop. Like I or never turn that. on even text, right? Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, I might if I'm trying to make like something for my website or something like that, but it's so rare and I'm usually Googling about it. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> How can I do this? And, you know, so even something as simple as text, I never really click on. Yeah, and did you know that is the second most used tool is the type tool in Photoshop? No way. See? Yeah. I'm a rebel. There's the selection <laughs> tool and the type. No, but you're exactly right. Because right. Even because when we have <laughs> illustrators come in and they're like, they're the illustrator in Photoshop, but all they do is use brushes and stuff. Uh huh. So the Kyle T. Websters of the world, and they never use the text tool because they just right. don't, you know, ever need it. You, you know? just don't need it. Um, in my work, you don't need it. But yeah, so the so I saw somebody in the chat talk about the wolf, and they said. They, they feel like cutting animals close even if they're blurred is important. Yeah, you definitely wanna crop them in close as you can. You wanna get it to be a good cutout. What I'm saying is you don't have to worry about every single little hair and things like that that you might have to worry about or that you definitely have to worry about when they're in the foreground. Yeah. Um, so you def, you know, because one thing with animals is you can really tell when the hairs are not there in the front, you know, when it is a quick cutout and when they are detailed and bigger. So that's mm -hmm. really important. Even on birds, you know, the slightest bit of their feather and things like that really make them look more realistic. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let me... I'm into it. <laughs> and I think what you're doing to make it help, help it look more realistic, your color palette is like pretty limited and that like helps you out because you're not dealing with all these colors. It's helpful that it's like you're I have staying a color go to bluish gray. And I, I again really talked helps. about pops. So even if you're using warmer colors, I think that when you have one main subject where the color's popping, it can draw the eye in. So if I made this book like this multicolored thing and then I did something else with the wolf and then she had this other color and then mm -hmm. they all weren't going together. You're so good. The focus wouldn't be on her. Yeah. So I you're... think even when you're using stock, whatever you use to create, uh, my recommendation would just be to figure out your color palette for that image and mm -hmm. really try to make them all sync together. Yeah. That's, um, in that's some really way, it doesn't good. matter what colors you like to use. You can use warmer tones or whatever. Yeah. No, that's huge. Um, and Ted does that same thing. You know, you'll see that his colors will change. I see from earlier, his colors will change here, there, there, there. And with every single post, his colors change. Oh, but okay. they're always similar color palettes in the photo. So everything works together. Yeah. Well, and I like how you, you mentioned something that like, you know, you're, you're using color to like draw the eye. You're right. using it for a purpose, basically, is how you're using color. And I think about that when I'm buying the like clothes for us and things like that. I actually think in color pops now, which is oh. funny because I used to like wear a lot of no colors, <laughs> like yeah. all the time. Yeah, but I all will think black. about it if I'm picking out a jacket for myself. It's just I naturally go to color pops now, hmm. not even really. Thinking, I need a color pop for a photo, but just kind of that's it's changed my way. Photography has changed my way of thinking about color hmm. yeah. and just thinking about things that I wear that's or that I'm picking out. And I was really excited when I found that jacket because that was like a eBay find. That's awesome. It was that's just like, like a vintage perfect... eBay find. I had to wait two months to receive it. Wow. It was ridiculous. But once I got it, I, I was really excited. 
Yeah, I'm into it. A little it seems perfect. Old eBay for... used wine. eBay's great for stuff like that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I just find a lot of stuff on there. <laughs> no, that's cool. It'd go down the eBay rabbit hole. <laughs> right. So that's where that's where you are from like one to two a.m. You finished your editing at one. From one to two, that's what's happening. Then go down you the eBay rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I definitely want to lighten up this background. And um, I'm pretty sure I used curves on these as well, um, just because, oh, you know what? I haven't put a curves layer at all, so that's what's going on here. Okay. So I'm gonna put the curves layer above everything because it's gonna be, see, already that looks more blended. A little too dark, but just more blended. And mm. see how I just brought that front out? Already much better. Um, like that. There it goes. From like that to that. Just yeah. the value of curves. I cannot emphasize that enough. I um, still, yeah, and I love, I just, yeah, I really love your use of, of gray and mist. Oh, something as simple as just how to get this white line out, right? Obviously, I'm gonna blur the edges a little bit and kind of make it look more into the scene. But something as simple as just, you know, you can use this. I actually like to use the um, pencil. Mm -hmm. it's too big. Hey, Rocky, what's up, buddy? Rocky Montez Carr says he he loves your color toning, and I agree. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and he knows. He's a great Photoshop retoucher, and he's a Photoshop master. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, so that's it. I really appreciate it. Yeah, big, um, big compliment from coming from him. And you can stick here, press the hardness. But again, just click on it, shift it. There you go. So what did you, you have a brush, you clicked. I took the hardness on the brush. Uh -huh. Took the hardness up to 87-ish. Okay. I just guesstimate sometimes at yeah. that. But clicked it, held down shift, went there. So you're taking that straight line. Okay. It's really so, nice for wow. books and things like that, that, you know, um, have those straight lines. You obviously can't use it if you're going around hair. But yeah, no, but I, I'm just making sure everybody knew about that. Yeah, I wanted, I thought, I just thought maybe a lot of people know this, but maybe they don't. So maybe they'd want to yeah, see it. Yeah, totally. Like I did not know that, or at least see? I haven't used it in ages. See that? Versus, um, you know, that. So click once, shift, click again. Yeah, Boom. and hold down the shift. And that just already made it look a lot more blended into the scene, um, just because it doesn't have that slight white outline. It's just a really easy fix if you're in there and you're, oh no, I put my background in. I have this weird white line. <laughs> yeah, and it just it gave it, a, it gave it a little Victor, bit of it gave it a little bit of depth too. See. Well, yeah, and it sounds like Victor, the white line actually makes it more realistic makes it stand out a little bit. Maybe, that's a good way to think about it. Yeah, it can. And Maybe. It, and that's where like, how you see your art kind of comes into play. Because for me, it was bothering me. Mm -hmm. For the next person, it might not bother them. And yeah. That's, it, and it's, but it's just a cool little trick you can do if you, if you do have that and it is bothering you. And uh, you don't want it there. But yeah, you're right. I mean, the white line would well, and it's good to think about like where where is the uh, light source coming from? Right, it's gonna be coming you from know. the moon. And the moon is so close, so it's not realistic at all. It's oh, the moon is in the back, is not even in there yet, technically. No, so okay. the, the moon is completely um, unrealistic in this, right? Because when you see a lot of full moon shots, they're silhouetted, everything else in front is silhouetted. But this moon is so close up, it'd be like a giant sun. You mm -hmm. know, it's just lighting up everything. So there is a lot of contrast in there and stuff, but I did play with the surrealism of that a little bit. Uh, all right, uh, Mickey's bedtime. Mickey is our winner of our Moo uh, $35 gift certificate. Nice. It has to go to bed. We start to hit 
we hit sort of people from different countries at different times of the day. Yeah, I've had people write to me too and some. tell me that they, you know, they couldn't because it gets super late. So um, anyway, also the giant moon I was talking about. Let's see. Oops. And I'm actually gonna get rid of some of the pink tones back here too, just cause. You are, I've seen you use this color balance a couple times. I feel like you're pretty strong, like. I can do selective color too. Yeah. Times. Taking down the magenta, getting rid of it a little bit. Your go-to is like, I feel like I've used, I've seen you use this selective color and mm -hmm. uh, curves mm -hmm. a lot. What's up, Green Mohawk? Hey, yo. <laughs> Good to have you here, Green Mohawk. So the moon itself was just, um, I think it needs to be scaled a bit, but it was just a over overlay of moon, moon with a black background can Google those things too. And this actually helps. So Victor was like, oh, it kind of made the book stand out, but now the book really stands out with the moon back there. Yeah, so so that's, and I hadn't really, see, so that's how the moon ended up. Yeah, that's cool. Because, um, and so really I knew the light source was gonna be coming from the giant moon. That was the whole, so sometimes I don't, I don't have, you know, sometimes I, have these big plans and sometimes I don't. With this one, I had a very solid plan of what I was going in for. The only thing that changed was the background, so. I love it. Let's see. Uh, yeah. And so, done. Well, you not just... done yet, but <laughs> I mean, I'm still working on it. But basically, and then another thing I did too is, um, side note with this, is I added these clouds in. See how it kind of, but I only did them before her. You can add clouds, oh, you can add fog brushes, you can do whatever you want. So if you can kind of warp it for you or at least undo and kind of show you. Mm -hmm. let, me bring, let me bring it over really quick. So um, if I delete the layer mask there, you'll see that there was more to it. I had warped it and it was a little too much still. So I went ahead, cause I didn't want it in front of the book at all. So I went ahead, took my soft brush, hardness down, size up. And then, um, let me see. Took it down off here. So now it's looking more like it's behind the book. Take the opacity down. See, with the soft brush, the opacity is so key and the hardness of the brush. How much, how hard do you want to be, how much do you want to be taking off? How little, all yeah. that. Yeah, it looks good. So a couple things. First off, welcome Green Mohawk. First time here. Has never been on the site till now. Awesome. Well, one thing you learn how to do is make a, like to log in, you have a profile, profile pick. Uh, just so you know, we're here pretty much every week. Behance.net forward slash live covering either photography, photo compositing is all this week. Next week is going to be more about uh, graphic design and editorial design. So that'll be fun. But the subject changes from week to week. And we're here to help you. So let us know what we need to do. And we'll do, we sometimes do random things like portfolio reviews, which is happening in a, about less than eight minutes. So get those in. So I don't have, yeah. <laughs> and then by the way, like, <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. You're busy working. It's hard to pay attention. I'm telling you things. You're looking over there. You can test me on what like, you just said and I probably fail. No, you're totally <laughs> fine. But Paulo brings up, and this is why I love people watching. Paulo, oh. we're kind of talking about the contrast of the book. I, yeah, I don't. I think it looks good. So here, let me show you guys something because this actually isn't. I uh, forgot <laughs> that I actually, if you look at the original book, the book was a little bit lighter, and so it's kind of fun. You can play around with even the dodge tool, kind of lighten it. Like you said, you don't always love what you get from that, but I think sometimes it's good. See. The dodge? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it kind of depends. Like, so, and I think Tim and, and Paulo and are actually on the I'm going right. to take the exposure down a little bit. But see, just a little pop of light on that. Yeah. See, that already made it. See? See? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, see, it already made it like a little bit pop. 
you know, pop a little bit more, you can see the blue a little bit more. Um, not too much, but just enough to kind of go with it. So for this one here, uh, let's see if I take the book off, her hand is there, but I wanted it to be in front. Oh, and did you see that little bit of his arm? It's gone. Oh, so I yeah. can still go back and show how I would take it off if it didn't get covered, but it actually got covered by fog, which is cool. Oh, that was easy. And that was uh, just happened because mm. I wanted fog. <laughs> So, Paulo, I think you're right. Paulo, I'd love to look at your portfolio. I bet you it's pretty strong. So hopefully you submitted yours. Just talks about having, you know, maybe it, maybe the book takes in some of the colors from the ground, for instance. Should it, should it be a gradient? Or, like, where does the light come from? And all those are, like, really... It says that you're experienced in, in what you do, too. That's so. why I don't want the book to go, oops, too far that way because you can go too far, like Tim was talking about, you know, mm -hmm. there's a way to use dodge and burn non-destructively, and that's true, and they can become really valuable tools. And that's how, how I kind of feel about curves, too. You can go way overboard with curves, go down too far and up too far, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. it's looking like this really odd image, you know, um, and kind of taking away from what you're actually creating. Uh, but you can even take it down to as little as, you know, 11%. I just meant just a little, pop mm -hmm. of something to kind of make it, if I should zoom in, you know, um, see, just make it stand up it's a little bit more. Yeah, into it. So the book's not actually being lit up, but it's just kind of. It depends on where you're viewing it to and where this is ultimately going to go, because mm -hmm. you, you might need to play with the contrast and brightness and push it a little bit, depending on, on where the final piece is going to end up. See, this is going to be going more like right there. It's not going to be going under the entire book. But it's going to be going right here. And of course, yeah, there's, I think there was another question about how um, to know, you know, to make sure you're not filtering it too much. And that's going to be a personal, of uh, filtering the colors too much, where it kind of looks, starts looking like an Instagram filter, where you like do too much color. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be kind of a personal preference, right? Some people, it's a fine line too, again, you know, um, just playing around with those colors. It took me a really long time to find out where I wanted to go with my color palette. Um, Cause I've been doing photography. I picked up a camera um, when my daughter was first born and then um, really started doing photography full time about five years ago. So, um, and then didn't really develop where I wanted to go with my colors until, you know, a few years after that. So, um, just kind of developing that on your own and deciding what colors look good to you mm -hmm. and um, how you can still maintain that realism if that's kind of what you're going for. I mean, some people go for complete surrealism with all their stuff, so. Yeah, and I'd say I'd, I wouldn't sweat any of that too much. Like mm -hmm. if you're worried about what what colors you like to use, just you just do you, you do it. Cause right. I think you just working in Photoshop, like it did kind of develop over time, but it just kind of, it just kind of came like out I'm of you. Thinking, yeah. Right, I feel like I'm just creating what looks good in my mind. And, mm -hmm. and I'm just creating the colors until I think they look good. I just kind of feel it out. Even though my color palettes are similar, Every single image is created by itself with different layers and different curves and different things until I decide that, hey, I think this looks good now. <laughs> it's right? just kind of like, That's for some reason, my mind decides that one's good now. You're good. Yep, totally. And of course, I feel like you can forever think you can edit something and you'll look back on an image that you created and still think you can do more with it, you know? Um, it's just kind of how it how it goes. So her foot, I cut her out just like I was doing yesterday, select a mask and all that. Um, but her foot is actually pretty blended on there because of the fact that she was standing on those actual rocks. Um, so that was good. And again, I didn't imagine that it was gonna be this surreal of a scene when I was taking it, but um, it just kind of developed like that. And with this cloud, I would probably take it's down at 74% opacity, but I might even take it down a little further. You can even warp it a little bit more. I'm gonna move it down to take more of it out. So yeah. those are just small little tweaks you do along the way. And uh, let's see here. 
not all the way done yet. Obviously there's still some blending to do and things like that, but it's looking like it's getting somewhere. And um, I'm into I it. Ra Rainy says it's ones. a very creative image. Oh, thank you. I agree. And that's what you do is you'll play around with things because Michael's thinking, well, do you add a little bit more fog in the foreground or the bottom? Like you could try, it's a, like there are no wrong answers. You just work it out. Well, if you, you look know? at these two images, even though they're supposed to be almost identical, they're not. Like it, me creating it today, I actually took more of the fog out over in this corner and created it then and I left a lot more. So each day, even if you recreate the same image, it's going to look a little bit different. Yeah. It just will, just because maybe you feel a little different that day. I don't know. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's hard to like recreate it exactly. Maybe that's but. how I got sorted into both Ravenclaw and Gryffindor. Maybe I was feeling more brave that day and <laughs> I got put in Gryffindor. <laughs> yep, that's true. Into it. So yeah, and um, oh, let me pull up a couple for, I think we're almost done, but I can pull up a uh, another image that I did. So I took this image. Let me pull up the PSD. Oh, this is great. So I actually used a real little moon for that, right? And this was a sky I had taken another time, just like I was telling you guys, you know, if you see a sky, take a stock. If all you have is a phone, take a phone shot at the sky. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes those will work. Um, I do, I shoot on my DSLR, but I've seen people do some really cool things with phones too. So yeah. don't let oh, your totally. equipment stop you from taking some stock of your own. Um, but yeah, so these have a lot, this has a lot more layers. I didn't imagine to go, um, this was a pretty simple image. It's not the most layers I've worked with, but it wasn't the least. And I thought it was going to be a lot less, but you just get into it. And I even yeah, like, did, are, I even did a hand, I even cut out a hand. See, I didn't, I didn't label, but, um, I even, oh, I think those were the stars I worked with. Okay. I had to bring stars in because okay. I, I don't take the pictures of the stars. But if you take the hand out, I took a picture of his hand and just layered it over. And it doesn't look like much, but it really is important because even mm -hmm. though his hand was holding, so if you hide all layers, this was the beginning shot. There he is, being taken out again, my husband. <laughs> we uh, like, wow. held the moon up by a string. We just attached it with a string, you know? And, um, and nice try, see. hubby. Try to get in the shot. <laughs> Each time he's in the shot, it gets taken out. Why? One of We're these days. We're moving them all. <laughs> one of these days, he's going to make it in a shot. So good. He actually did the Harry Potter family shots. Oh, I think. Uh, he yep. gets in. That's true. But, um. No, I don't. He's like, know. why you got to be that way? Why are you always taking me out? So, I decided to add a string, just kind of like the idea of this moon coming down from the sky. So, this. These were all shots I took aside from the stars and um, the string. I found a stock rope and just kept adding to it. Um, I cut it out and then I just kept adding to it because I don't think we have much more time, but I just wanted to show that. And this was um, not the image I went out and took and planned for. It was just, um, I have a trunk full of props. You do? <laughs> yes. If you saw my trunk most of the time, you'd laugh because there's like suitcases and moons and lights and all these weird things. So if somebody just broke into my car, they would just say, what am I going to do with all this stuff? <laughs> but, um, you know, baskets or whatever else, because if I'm going out somewhere and then when we go spend a day in the mountains, I mean, our trunk is packed with just props we might want to use. Because I, again, don't it. always go out knowing exactly what I'm going to capture. Um, I'm a mom and I run out of time just all the time. So I've learned to work under pressure. <laughs> I'm into it. So yeah, that was another PSD that I just wanted to show um, how I, what I started with. And um, this one was actually mostly taken. Oh, this one was cool. And I, we, uh, it looks like our, it's time oh, for we're portfolio done. reviews. But I want you to, I want to come back to these. Yeah, so just, a couple, these just a couple more just to show the before and afters ones. a little bit. And this is what I want to see, like all these layers, like where you started exactly. This one was actually like barely any layers. I mean, I, I'm used to working with a lot more, but mm -hmm. the concept was pretty simple. Um, and this image sat on my hard drive for so long because I thought there was nothing I was going to be able to do with it. And that can happen a lot. Yeah. You can walk away from something and come back and be like, okay, you know what? There's actually something here. Yeah. And that's happened to me a lot. I like it. Very cool. Into well, it, Tim Into said. it. <laughs>
That's, I'm, right. that's gonna be stuck in my head for so long now, <laughs> into it. <laughs> yes, it's good stuff. So, uh, we're gonna get into it now, shall we? Let's jump in a, to a spaceship. How about we do that right now? Portfolio reviews. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> We're on the spaceship. Portfolio is so amazing. We got to see them from space. Boop, boop, boop. Go ahead. I don't even know what I'm doing. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop. Oh, let's see if it's breathable. It is breathable. That we are on the spaceship still. I'm gonna take my helmet off. We could keep them on. Keep them on. You kind of like it, huh? I do. I forgot my antlers. So now I don't I know <laughs> how, how well I could do this. I might take mine off for a second. And uh, special thanks <laughs> to Kirsten. Can you get it? You got it. I'm good. I got oh, it. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, we are in space. We got to travel out to space to view these amazing portfolios from space. I'm really from excited space. about this. I'm into it. And, Is that uh, what you say? Right, into <laughs> it. Uh, but again, we're not taking, like, it, may, it might not be the best ones or anything. Like, we just, we just take two of them basically two portfolios and, uh, two portfolios okay yeah. would love to how take do we more. choose we already have them chosen oh how do we do it it's done with magic and a lot of magic i think there's a Magical. there's a patronus involved a patron. or something <laughs> yeah but congratulations to kirsten knutz uh, uh already commented in germany Oh, good. I'm so glad you're here because yeah. Germany has to be like really late. So I'm so glad you're able to make it, Kirsten. And here's your portfolio. Uh, let's kind of, we can check it out here. I kind of want to read a little bit just to kind of see where they're coming from. So again, fine arts, photography, digital art is their focus. Uh, professional artist who lives, works, swims in Frankfurt, Germany. Ooh, wow. Her artwork's featured yeah. in leading magazines and, and exhibitions worldwide. Nice. Right. So it sounds like we have professional artist has been working in the field a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, it's great to have you here. Yeah, definitely. I'm, like honored to look at your work. I don't even feel like. I mean, it's beautiful. Right. <laughs> well, this kind of there's lots of under there's lots of water passion and underwater love. I love the underwater <laughs> shots. I love them. They are wow. absolutely just they blow my mind they're just incredible i mean Look there's so much pressure i have a friend who does certain things like this and so much pressure you know when you're taking photos under water wow this is a uh, really really strong love this black and white i love her black and white conversions they're just beautifully done i uh, yeah i like it's almost this like hdr look you know this high dynamic range I mean, look at this height. Look at all the, a lot of work went into this. I would love to kind of see the original. The details and everything. Yeah. So sharp. Look at that. Yeah, the. Very cool. You just get amazing work with this water interacting with, with the people. I don't, I don't really have any comments. I'm gonna scroll through how many we have here. Wow, this is all in one portfolio. Appreciate. Very cool. Welcome to Otherland. And this is obviously more like fine art, so it might not need an exclamation or a, you know, uh, show us the original versus the final. I, th I think this is really strong. Yeah, this is, is fine art for sure. I really like how this is displayed in this grid. Uh, There's just so much thought that went into the entire portfolio too, and what um, order and how she wanted it to flow. And you can just tell that so much work went into it. Wow. Beautifully done. Just, yeah. I don't really have anything at all. I don't either. I really like the look of this in this grid form. Like this is beautiful. Just just letting my one eye wander through all this content is really cool. It's incredible work. And I'm glad you made it one portfolio. Some people would maybe do this is this is in one project. This one's in another, but I'm glad you grouped it all under one. Um, I want to look at the gold. Okay. 
S swim, swim pop gold. That's such an interesting take on a water shot. Mm-hmm. What? I haven't seen anything like that. What? Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Look at uh, that. Kristen, let us know if you're particularly proud of a certain project. Or, that you don't want to look at, yeah. Yeah. Look at that yeah. one. I feel like that just needs to be blown up on a giant canvas mm -hmm. and just... I would love to see this printed in gold foil, huh? Oh, yeah. Because that's kind of what it looks like. It looks, yeah. Because she turned the water into that, the bubbles. That's really cool. That's a Ooh. fun one. Yeah, oh yeah, look The at perspective. Them. I mean, she had to be right underneath. Yeah. And so, look at those colors. See, this is an example where it there's so many colors and aspects going on, but it works because of the yeah. style that she had going. Like it just, it works. That so is you really look cool. at it immediately and it just all seems to flow together. So color is not a bad thing. You can bring tons of color in, but the mm. way she did it just works really well. So nice. Look at that. Yeah, I wonder if there's one she wants us to go through specifically. Look at that. Yeah. Great stuff. Like, look at this. It's gorgeous. I like just the amount of detail in this. It looks like we can scroll on and on. Um, That's very cool. Fantastic. Uh, let us know if there's one. I kind of want to go to this first one just to make sure we, like, this is her sort of, like, latest. And so she's using color, but just in a way that, um, she said pop love is the one that she wanted. So We pop were love. doing... Oh. She said swim pop love, this one. Oh, I think that's the one we just did. No, that was the gold. Oh, swim pop gold. Oh, sorry. She wanted us to see. Oh, there's her camera. Her Leica. Waterproof with a waterproof case on it, or something. I like something. how she's using color. Yeah, this selection is hard. I don't know how that's done. It's almost had an, il an illustrated feel to it. Mm hmm. Hi, Mark. That's really cool. <laughs> Maybe she was going through different emotions because you know how they start out very black and white and now these, this portfolio is, you know, full yeah, of Yeah, go color. back to that other one you had with the architecture. That was really cool too and a totally different take. Okay. That Oops. one right there. Bow. I just like the way that the, the color was used. Again, it looks more yeah, like, like an illustration of some kind. Mm-hmm. Nigar likes bow as well. There's so uh, many pieces. This. So many elements and things. Oh, that's nice. So here, here. Oh, so with all of her styles. Interesting. Different takes. If you go back to, I might have, hmm. go for it. I might have the rain just coming from the sky area. Oh, yeah, if it came from right there. Oh, just coming from the sky, just to check it out and see mm -hmm. if, like, if it's the rain's coming from one area, maybe it, the I would be drawn there. But, again, that's just personal pers I like that idea. Because, because if she saw it in a different way, then that's how she saw it. Well, so. and I think what's what what she is kind of interested in is perspective. So taking pictures underwater, up at somebody underwater, and I that's love, the sort of I thing. love the perspectives. I really do. I love these uh, complementary colors. I yeah. feel like she uses colors in a really cool way, and the colors themselves kind of tell a story. But mm -hmm. The black and whites are really cool too. I love the vintage vibes of the black and whites. They're so classic. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. I mean, we could probably sit down and read over some of this. I know we're just like, "Hey, that's neat," but it is really, it is really cool. Yeah, I no wanted to see if there's something at the bottom. Okay, sort of like a deconstructive architect type look. Yeah. 
Like a psychiatrist treats his patients. Hmm. Into it, and I've already appreciated it. Feel free, jump in. Appreciate Kirsten's work. She has so much in each one of these, and I think overall, like, this is really good. I mean, oh, like, here's, looks like, yeah, so it's, this is interesting. Like this here, I want this on my wall. This is just gorgeous, don't you think? I just really like all of the textures she plays with. Mm -hmm. I think it's important. <laughs> Daniel's not impressed. Sorry, we're, sorry, we're not. You're not impressed, Daniel. <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> Love it. Like, look at this. Amazing. You're funny. I mean, look at this. Look at that. So uh, underwater, that. underwater and work is very much... hard. It's like, it's all about timing and how the lighting's hitting the water and all of that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's difficult work. Yeah, look at this. Look at look at this. I would consider what would also be interesting, <laughs> considering perspectives. They're falling into water. Oh wow! It'd be interesting to take some of these and then turn them upside down too, just just for fun. You know, if I really they dove love in, the gold. The gold it. with the black series is just so sweet. Yeah. Great job. Nothing but good things. Love every single one of them. All right, let's move on. Uh, Kirsten, you are so great. We're following you. We're stalking you. <laughs> We're stalking you. We're stalking you now in, a, in the nicest way possible. In a, ni a non-creepy way. That's what We're I call the follow you. button. Yeah. <laughs> It's very cool, like all across the map. Very cool. Um, you know, yeah. I don't have any any comments other than what we just said. Nick Peterson, congratulations. Nick Peterson is up next. He's like, what? I, what's over there? I heard a sound. It's a <laughs> the picture. <laughs> following you. What was that? <laughs> From Salt Lake City. So Nick, I don't know if you are here, but. Uh, it's like got a uh, lot of I'm been excited featured to a lot of places. Do, do we know Nick? Nick is a photographer, digital artist. Oops, so sorry. Do we sorry, know sorry, Nick? Sorry. Do we know you, Nick? Do we know you, Nick? <laughs> do we know you? Oh, he um, has a BFA in, in, in photography, nice. MFA in digital imaging from Pratt Institute. Wow. Wow, this will Let's be... Let's dive right in. This is going to be crazy. I want to dive right in. I usually kind of like to start at the bottom, but let's just... Let's just get into this. What about? Oh. oh, sorry. Oh, that's pretty cool. Trash fighting green. Ah, oh, nice. Psh, psh, I psh. love uh, digital art that has a meaning like that. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Where the hunt. Mean? What was the hunt? Oh yeah. I wanted to check that out. That is. Okay, the colors speak to me. I yeah. love the colors in this. They're speaking to me. And let me. And then the bit of light down there. Book cover for the no for the novel The White Human Science Fiction. Beautiful cover art. Oh, and I love this sort of taking it apart. I th or maybe these are just like snapshots, close ups. But. Absolutely, I I love the colors too, just illuminating yeah. and just the feel. I mean, I was drawn to it immediately. Yeah. Neon light really is fun to play with because it just draws your eye in. Awesome. Oh, Eric and Nick are in the same Utah team. That was off to the side on Behance. Nick, I'm so glad you're with us, man. You are definitely, yeah, hi, Nick. Yeah. you know. I'm excited that he's here. Nick, let us know if you want us to pull up any particular one that you might be fond of. Oh, yeah. If you want us to look Ooh. at one. Anything with dinosaurs is cool. I'm sold. But that's a, look at that. a dinosaur. Mammoth. Oh, it's a mammoth. <laughs> Sorry. But I'm sold on dinosaurs, too. <laughs> Yep. I mean, look at I want I want to know I want to see the work behind this. You know, I want to see what the different parts, you know, came from. It looks like it was featured on desktop desktop desk topography, um, which is a great place to get desktop images like nice uh, desktop wallpaper. It's beautiful. I'm just so this is again a really cool black and white conversion because those aren't always the easiest. Ooh, black and white can go very wrong in a photo if not done right. 
the highlights matter so much and just where the lighting's hitting it and all of that contrast. That's beautiful. I love it. The tiger stalking. Go back. Look good. Yeah. Okay, he said refuge or canopy. Yeah. He wants some of his yeah, newer more. stuff. Okay, you got it. I will say that like I was kind of like looking at the uh, any sort of shadow of this tree, and there's mm -hmm. no shadow, but he has like a little bit of a shadow, so he could almost do without that shadow. And I'm just being like super nitpicky. Um, but you know, just to try to give some sort of yeah, something. like if he make him feel more in this environment, how how is he closer, kind of related to this tree, if you will? Um, but again, I mean, I just. You don't you don't learn anything if we're just like, oh, that's great. You're not, you know, so we're just trying to, I mean, this is all fantastic, quite frankly. I would love to know the backstory on all of this. This is just amazing. Look at this glint of light. And which one did you say? I know. Refuge and Canopy. Okay, you got it. Summeroo is like my favorite. So awesome. There's, There's Refuge. Those two. Oh, wow. Oh, no. These are going to be good. It's beautiful. Stop it already. Stop it, Nick. It's so good. I love good. it. Sold. We'll take it. Yeah. We'll Sold. It. Sold. You sell it because we're buying. We're <laughs> buying what you're selling. Look at this gorgeous. <laughs> like, it's just gorgeous. The colors are so beautiful. Right, and they look that. really natural. Mm -hmm. Just really beautiful. That is so great. For having such a colorful. Oh, look at the petal on the petals. The details on the petals. Oh, right here, yeah. Very nice. Look at that. I would love to see like some of the raw images from some of this. Oh, wow. This is a great setup. This is this whole placement of it. It's super cool. So this is all like, and then Refuge. I'm gonna check that out. Okay. Large scale panoramic image created using imagery of mountains, forests, and animals. This reminds me of Colorado. Photographed at the Rocky Mountain National Park oh, in Colorado. This what? is why I thought it looked like the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> it does. Because I'm always at Rocky Mountain National Park. I go there a lot and it looked like it. I really like what you're writing in here as well. Just like talking about, you know, he, he his goals of it. My main goal is to create elaborate photo level realistic images that carry a message of conversation, converse, conservation and sustainability. That's kind of what I got from your work with um, the garbage fighting the green and things like that. And I think carrying messages like that through your art is just such a cool thing. I'd want to know, like, look at all that. I could see you pulling this off, too, by the way. Except for animals, you're not really into. I mean, I do There some. would be a magical child in here somewhere <laughs> if you did this. But the Rocky Mountains are this magical. I mean, they're just, I mean, as Nick will know, Especially you go through them and they're just insane. Yeah. You feel so small, and I kind of like feeling the feeling of being small in them. Mm -hmm. There's something about being in a giant city oh, or in giant mountains and feeling tiny. Gorgeous. And you just kind of, it's humbling. Yeah. So good. It's beautiful. It kind of makes me want to go to the Rocky Mountains, which I'll be back yes. doing this weekend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so thank you. It's the largest piece he's ever created, so it's 30,000 pixels wide. It's beautiful. Wow, it's imagine opening that file up. <laughs> like, you have to open it well, up Well, it's at for large-scale prints, right? So you're able to print that out. Yeah. Oh, it's made up of more than 100 photographs meticulously pieced together. Yeah, I could definitely tell it was multiple photographs. Um, it's so mm -hmm. gorgeous. And then I love, okay, what I really love is how he shows that original image and then shows pieces of it separately and you can yeah. really get in on all the mm. details. Yeah. I agree. Nick, you are the man. Okay, we only have uh, uh, I don't do a lot of thumbs minutes. up, but I'm gonna give you two thumbs up. You get two thumbs. <laughs> you get a total of four thumbs up. You get four thumbs up. So fantastic. That Nick was really Peterson, great. Christian Knutz did an, an amazing job as well. Man, so impressed. Props to Nick from Paco as well. Um, did you want to show any last thing or were you? Yeah, I can or? show just what I was going to show really fast. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I'm not... I checked just, the time. I just want to make sure that you're. So you've again, said everything you need to say. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, let's see. So let's do, uh, so I just took the window out. So this one actually in the original image was, let's see if I can find it. Did I not bring it over? Oh, it was this guy. So I just took this in a cabin that we stay at and for the longest time, I just wasn't really inspired by the image. And the point is, is that you, you can look back at an image, you know, a few months later and just say, oh, you know what? I'm gonna create something in it. And um, I just did a very simple, I, I thought, it. what if they're staring at a giant moon? Yeah. And um, because I thought about bringing stuff into the window, bringing it out of the window, doing this, this and that. and ended up just going with something very simple, you know, just thought what, and I take so many photos and so that I can go back and edit them later and do things and fuse different ones together and all that. Obviously I'm not a moon photographer, but <laughs> just brought all of that in. And um, it ended up being just a really, not such a complicated piece, you know, fairly easy piece. And, um, but I ended up really liking it. And so it went from there you know, to that. I'm into it. I, I love it because, again, like, and I'm really impressed with, of course, uh, Nick's, Nick's work, like, you, a thousand photographs melted together, like, definitely oh. shows, but it doesn't have to be so complex to be really impactful as well. I tend know? to do very simple subjects. Uh, that's just what I do, but um, some will end up with layers. So <laughs> the Patronus I made was 50 layers alone, you know? Yeah. Um, but some of them don't have to be so extreme either. Yeah, and they that's can still what I be like. beautiful. That's what I love about it. Um, so they can still be beautiful even if they're not, um, like this piece right here is the last one I'll show. But um, I took a picture of her. I'm just kind of showing some of my more simple images. Just took a picture of her reading a book. And um, just, oh, some of them are, hold on. Some of my other layers are showing. I'll go back and then added, you know, oh, yeah. different elements in there. Um, stock of the hot air balloons, the brushes, some, some lightning birds. going down lightning. and birds. Okay. And it was just kind of supposed to represent what we see when we're reading a book and how it sparks all of our imaginations. And that's really what all this is about. You know, we're all gonna have different ways that we create and different things that we do. And, mm -hmm. um, how we get there is going to be different as well. But, you know, being able to learn different pieces and maybe different brushes people use or different things can help you along the way. And the moon, um, she was actually holding a moon, but I also used off camera lighting to light up her face even more. So it looked more brilliant. That little, the sphere, right? Mm -hmm. She was okay. holding the sphere. And then I took off camera lighting, lit up her face. Okay. And um, then I dispersed the moon mm -hmm. um, to kind of make it look like this moon falling apart into the atmosphere. Very cool. And I, again, didn't think I actually got an image that night. I took uh, quite a few and just thought, you know what? And then I looked back at it two weeks later and realized I actually had something. Oh, happen. nice. You have a lot of little, uh, like, I feel like a lot of uh, what I've heard you say the past couple of days is like, oh, this didn't didn't maybe work out as I planned, but then I went I went and created this. So it's like your outcome is always... Rolling with it makes a big difference. Yeah. Being expected. able to just roll with whatever is thrown your way, especially, Nick probably knows, taking pictures in nature and things like that. Mm -hmm. They don't, it lighting, it, you don't get to control it. Um, I did start using off-camera lighting about... Mm -hmm. uh, a couple months ago, and that helped a lot, just to control the lighting. But no, it, works. it controls it a little bit more and gives you a little extra time. Yeah, no, love it. Love your work. You've been fantastic for three days. <laughs> Uh, and Fantastic. dare I say, like, she actually, <laughs> truth be told, she hasn't been feeling well, like, the past couple days and still kind of came in and we put her to work. We said, no, you can't <laughs> leave. But I'm so glad that you Actually, they gave me an escape out. route. They kept telling me I could leave at any time that I wanted, but my stubbornness point, made a, me stay. <laughs> there was a trash can right here just in oh, case stop. things turned south. So that's how dedicated she is. <laughs> And we really appreciate you sticking it out and thank hanging out you. with us. Thank you. No, I, I've loved being here, and uh, thank all of you for having me and Paul for. Yesterday we both weren't feeling oh, well. Oh man, it was rough. So both of us were like, I don't know if we, we could do this, and we did it. And we did it. And so we high fived done. afterwards. Well, we back fived, so we didn't yeah, get each other sick. We did we that, like... and then we immediately <laughs> collapsed. <laughs> yeah, but... I, I collapsed yesterday. <laughs> 
But it was, it was so good, great though. being here, and I'm just appreciative of it. Um, so yeah. thank you for tuning in and just hanging out. No, we're really thankful for you. Everybody give Alexandria a big thank you. Follow her, Alexandria's Lens, on Instagram. Replays tab as well. You can check out the whole week. Special thanks to all our guests. It's been super fun. And I'm yeah, glad it's been a great week. You had a good time even though you weren't feeling well? Yeah, I mean, I I loved it. So good. it's just First time telling my camera. body to just, you just, know, go away right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Well, thank you so much, everybody. That's it for us. Everybody have a wonderful day. Be healthy. Be kind to one another. And we'll see you Take next week. Take vitamin C. Vitamin C. <laughs> <laughs>